Good morning, friends. It is Friday. We have two family dinners we're going to today. So I am gonna be doing a little bit of baking. I'm just preheating the oven to 350 degrees. I wanna get these recipes in the oven so they can be baking while we do some serious organization and reworking of this kitchen. What we're gonna be baking today though first, we're gonna make a cranberry orange bread that has an orange glaze on it. We're gonna do a lemon poppy seed bread. These both are like a loaf style, kind of like a pound cake-ish. So they're gonna be dessert because I found these cranberries in my freezer that need to be used up. We have some orange juice and some poppy seeds that all of this stuff are things that can be used. But what the main goal for today is to get some serious organizational happening in this kitchen. We've got some things that just are not working well for us. And now that we've been in this kitchen for um, about five and a half months, we can start organizing. See, I have towels in this top drawer. I have towels in this top bottom drawer. I have a Dutch oven and sweet potatoes with some plastic cutlery. And then down here, we have more towels and more Dutch ovens over here. This cupboard is driving Josh crazy. So I want to get this organized for him. He does a lot of the unloading of the dishwasher and this is not functioning for him very well because I tend to be a stuffer of things in drawers so I don't have to see them on the counter. And then we got down here that needs to be organized. To some people, this may not look that bad. And to others of you, it's terrible. And we've got other drawers and cupboards we're gonna to get to today. Last night, I asked Josh if he had any preferences on where things went, and he gave me some good suggestions. He's more organized. I'm someone that does not like clutter on my counters. I don't like clutter. So sometimes I just stuff things in drawers and cupboards just so that I don't have to see it. But that does drive me crazy and that really does drive Josh crazy because he's the one that unloads the dishwasher and he doesn't always know where things go. So I'm gonna work on reworking it and he gave me some good suggestions. So let's get going on one of these breads first though so we can get it in the oven. We're gonna do the orange cranberry bread first. I'm gonna get going on the wet ingredients. We're just gonna mix this right in the bowl. I wanted to show you before we get started though actually one more thing. This has to be done today. This cupboard, I wanted to get done before the baby was born and I never got to it. There's some light. <laughs> you can see this is embarrassing, but this is real life. And you know, there are some parts of my house that are organized, but this is clearly not one of them. So we are going to transform this closet today. This is a good time to get going on some organizing things because it's still Gardening season has not started. Once gardening season starts, I'm gonna be outside, not inside. So I want to try to get as much organizing done before the craziness of our gardening starts. All right, so in this bowl, we're gonna put a fourth cup of milk. This recipe calls for butter, but I don't feel like melting butter, so I'm gonna add avocado oil instead. <laughs> So we're gonna add six tablespoons, so that is a quarter and an eighth of a cup of avocado oil in there. Three-fourths cup white sugar. Two eggs. These eggs are the smallest eggs I've ever seen store-bought from the grocery store. We're still doing okay on our store-bought eggs during pantry challenge, so I'm excited about that. We're gonna mix this together. This is the wet ingredients. It does not call for vanilla, but we're gonna add vanilla. And I almost forgot one of the most important ingredients, which is the orange juice. I have some orange juice that we need to go through, so I'm not going to squeeze a fresh orange, even though I do have oranges in my refrigerator. We're gonna add a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking powder. Salt. And 
and the zest of an orange, but I'm not gonna zest an orange right now, so we're just going to go with the orange juice. We're gonna stir this together. Changed my mind, I'm gonna zest an orange, I'm gonna wash this up. For some reason, I had my oven set to 400, so I just put it to 350. We're gonna zest this orange. This is gonna add some nice pretty orange flakes to it, so I really shouldn't skip this step. I just didn't feel like going out there and washing an orange. I'll eat this orange for breakfast. And then it says a cup and a half of cranberries. I'm just gonna use all the cranberries that I have. which is probably actually a little less than a cup and a half. So we'll get this stirred up. Those are frozen. I'm gonna put a little bit of spray on our pipe or our loaf pan. Now we're gonna get this beautiful batter into this loaf pan and then we'll get going on our second recipe. This was so easy. And because I have two family get-togethers we're going to this weekend, I thought I would just bake them up right together because I'm already going to have all of these utensils dirty. There's one of our cakes. The beauty of having a messy bowl and utensils, we can just double the fun and we can make less work on ourselves. So in here, we're going to go ahead and start. It says three-fourths cup of butter, but again, I do not feel like melting butter or getting butter to room temperature, so we're just gonna use avocado oil. This is a fourth cup, so we're gonna add three of these. Three eggs. Three-fourths cup white sugar. Two tablespoons lemon juice, which is an eighth of a cup. I don't have fresh lemon zest, so I can't add that to this. Two tablespoons poppy seeds. Three fourths cup milk. Mix that together. Again, I'm gonna add a little vanilla even though the recipe doesn't call for it. I can link these recipes down below. One and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking powder. And salt. We're gonna mix this together. One of these recipes says they need to bake for 45 minutes to 50 minutes. The other one says 50 to 55. So I'm gonna put them both in here and I'll set a timer for 45 minutes and we'll check them. But I think they're gonna take at least an, probably 55 minutes. The only thing I did in this kitchen to prepare for today was unload the dishwasher. So we can get these dishes right in the dishwasher. I can get this area cleaned up. I also want to clean and reorganize these baking drawers because they just flour and stuff has kind of gotten in them and so they need to be organized. So we're gonna to get to that. But first I'm gonna go ahead and get all these ingredients and my mess on the counter tidy. Yeah, this drawer needs some serious help. I just stepped in water. 
one of the main reasons I wanted to get the breads in the oven first thing in the morning is so that we can do some of the deep organization while those bread or loaves or pound cakes or whatever you want to call them are in the oven so that we can be in and out of here as quickly as possible. I think we can get some of this organization done pretty quickly if we stay nice and focused. I just got the counter clean and wiped. The drawers I want to tackle first are these ones because I want to get something productive and exciting under my belt so I feel like we did something. So because I am wanting to move these towels, I have more towels that fit in this drawer so they're overflowing into the bottom three drawers. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why don't I use one of these deeper drawers for the towels? So I'm gonna empty all these drawers. This doesn't go in here, that goes in a different drawer. I'm gonna find a new spot for my Dutch oven. And definitely my potatoes don't go in here, so those need to go in the pantry. We're gonna wipe this out. You know what, I think I'm gonna go get a vacuum to vacuum out these drawers. But before I do that, I'm gonna empty this, and then we'll have three empty drawers to reorganize. Now that we have our drawers vacuumed out, I'm going to get my Dutch ovens in this bottom drawer. I have them stacked on top of each other. And that is going to be the only thing in this drawer. So we're going to go ahead and get that closed. And then in here, we're going to put all of our dish towels. Now, this might look like a lot of dish towels to you, but I go through a lot of dish towels. I am a messy cook. I love to be able to wipe up messes with dish towels. Try to avoid using paper towels if I can. So now we have an entire drawer filled with dish towels, and I'm really excited about that. But that leaves us with this empty drawer, minus some papers and things that I'm going to go ahead and recycle and vacuum this out too. I went back and forth with Josh last night. What should I put in this drawer? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some of the stuff out of this drawer to put in there. I'm going to put the things in that drawer that I don't use as much of. I really like having my like measuring and baking stuff here because I have my baking stuff in front of me and it's really easy to, you see me do this all the time. But sometimes I can barely open and close that drawer right now because it's overflowing. So the first thing I'm gonna move this was Josh's idea. Move the knives over here because I don't chop anything on this area. So we're gonna put the knives in this drawer. So I'm just gonna start setting stuff here that we're gonna move over there. The other things I wanna move over there are things like my can opener. I maybe use this twice a year. I wanna keep it, but I don't use it very often so it doesn't need to be in here. I can move my lemon juicer, my tomato slicer, pizza cutter, ice cream scoop, sieve, peppercorn. I haven't used this yet. This was a gift in my PO box. I'm excited for this coming year when we grow peppers. We're gonna try that peppercorn. Oh, this should go over there. My knife sharpener. All right, I think that's everything. So you'll notice that none of the items going in this drawer now are baking items. They are all just random cut, like kitchen items that, like a pizza cutter that I use, but not all the time. I'm gonna need to get some sort of organizational things for in here. I don't have anything yet, but we're at least gonna go ahead and get the utensils where they go so that we, can figure out what type of organizational things we need. This is really cool. I got this, I think it was like at a estate sale and it's a tomato slicer. So we only use this really in the summer when the big tomatoes are coming in. Woohoo! that looks beautiful. Now this drawer is gross. There is flour and all sorts of baking things. 
So I'm gonna, first I think what I'm gonna do is just empty all of this in. Ooh, sorry, making really a ruckus so that I can access everything. See, these scissors can go in the other drawer. This knife can go in the other drawer. I think I'm gonna keep this pastry brush in here because that's definitely a baking item. I wanna keep my thermometer in here because it's close to the stove. Googly eye sprinkles definitely do not go in this drawer. Now we have a clean, fresh drawer that we can start putting stuff back into. Before we do that though, I want to kind of organize all of my measuring cups. I like to keep measuring cups, as you know, in my flour, oats, sugar containers, but everything has kind of got discombobulated. So I'm gonna go through all of those real quick before we start putting stuff back in those drawers. And I wanna get these cleaned out. I think what I'm gonna do is I need to refill my flour, sugar, and my oat containers. So I think I'm gonna empty all of these drawers, get them clean, and then we can start putting stuff back in these drawers. But in the meantime, I will also fill up my containers. I absolutely love having my containers in these drawers. If I was to ever design a kitchen, I would design it this way, but it does lead to, you know, we're going to have to do maintenance on it every once in a while because flour does fall into the drawer. I think it's going to be worth the effort of doing this on somewhat of a annual or twice a year basis for the convenience of having all my baking supplies right where I need them. This is probably something that I'm gonna to try to get into the habit of at least kind of maintaining every, at least, I, mean, I was gonna say every six months, but that's probably not realistic because during the height of garden and harvest and food preservation season, me getting into here and doing this is not gonna happen but at least once a year in the winter, this is the perfect time to kind of give your kitchen a reset. So I've always found when I do deep cleaning, it just helps if I just get everything out and then I clean and then I can start putting stuff back in. So now that we have these two drawers clean, we probably should tackle these drawers as well and get some semblance of organization. But I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my containers. I can link these down below. These are my absolute favorite bulk food or not necessarily bulk, but storage containers because they have such a wide mouth. I've had these for seven years. This was the, one of the first big kitchen purchases I made. And I love them because you can put an entire one cup and even, where is it? Two cup measure. Wah! I don't want to spill that vanilla in here so easily. I mentioned this before, but one of my biggest pet peeves growing up was my mom had her flour, oats, and sugar stored in pickle containers, like the one gallon glass pickle containers. And you could not fit a one cup measure in it with any sort of ease. So when I got my own kitchen, I was gonna buy a container that I could fit a big scoop in easily. And now I have bought my mom these containers and she loves them as well. 
So this bucket is empty. This is supposed to have rolled oats in it. Typically I like to keep one container in my upstairs pantry with rolled oats, sugar, flour, and one more thing, but now I can't think about what it is. And this flour container is empty, so we have two empty containers. What do we have down here? Oh, we have a third empty container. That's supposed to be white flour. And this one's whole wheat flour. So that is incredibly crazy that I have three. Oh, I have one more bucket here. What's in this bucket? Oh, perfect. Rolled oats. Okay. This is actually a good thing that these buckets are all getting empty up here because what that means is I know I have buckets downstairs that have these things in them as well. So I will take these empty buckets. I will bring them downstairs. We are in the middle of pantry challenge right now. So I'm going to start taking inventory of what I'm starting to run out of. These empty buckets will stay downstairs when I order more of these items. I will fill up these empty buckets and I will bring the buckets that already have flour and things up here so I can continually rotate my stock. Because when you buy in bulk like I do, you really don't want your stuff to go bad because then it's a waste of money, it's a waste of space, it's a waste of resources, and a waste of really good quality food. This is perfect. So I'm gonna get this lid back on and I'm gonna carry out these three empty buckets and just get them out from up here and downstairs so that it reminds me that I need to do some serious inventory at the end of this challenge so we know what we need to order. I'm gonna go downstairs, bring these buckets downstairs, and refill my flour and sugar containers while I'm down there. So I have one more container of flour that I'm able to bring up here, but I don't have enough sugar to fill a sugar bucket. So that's something that I'm gonna to have to put on the order for Azure um, next time I order. The reason I like to keep buckets up here, not just downstairs, is because my goal is to try not to have to go down there every time I wanna refill my containers that are in my kitchen. But since we moved in, I haven't really gotten that system down yet. So now I know I have whole wheat, oats, and a whole bucket of flour. These three are filled. I need to get a bucket of sugar up here and then we will be set. While I'm kind of in organizational mode, I have some camp of potatoes that we just canned together. I'm gonna get these brought downstairs. Let's see, I think what I'm gonna do is I will keep two up here so that if I want canned potatoes, I don't have to run all the way downstairs. I really wanna make a potato soup this week. So we'll see if that happens, but if it does, we'll probably use these potatoes. I also have some other items in here that can go downstairs, some extra mustard, some dates, and I think that's it. So I'll get these down there and on the pantry shelf. I totally forgot we have bread in the oven. Oof. It smells so good. They are not quite done, so we're gonna give those a couple more minutes. Now I have my whole wheat, my oats, my white flour and sugar all filled back up. We can get them into the drawers. I also have a half cup measure in my white flour, my whole wheat flour. I'm gonna keep those in there and a one cup measure in my oats. And then the reason, another reason why I really like these containers is because they are square. They are more efficient in space because they take up that if you have a round cylinder and a square cupboard, you're losing all that area that could be for the squared areas. I don't know what the proper like geometry would be, like the terminology for that, but I just know that these are a lot more efficient in space than anything that's round because I could maximize the space in the corners. So I like to put the sugar in the back and I put the flour sugar in this one because I use these ones the most. And then I have my, this is my score for bread. 
I'm gonna stick that in this front area here along with, I like to keep my vanilla there. And then I've been really enjoying keeping my brown sugar tilted on its side right here. So that's all in here along with the other ingredients I use a ton of, which is my baking powder, baking soda. I have a little container of yeast that I keep at room temperature and then I have the rest of it in the freezer. So we'll put our yeast in here, our avocado spray, and that's everything I like in this container or this drawer. I think I'm gonna go wash off my vanilla because it's kind of sticky. I also might as well refill it while I'm at it because it is almost out. I always keep a thing of homemade vanilla going. I like to use spiced rum and vanilla beans. I let it sit for months and months and months. And then I have homemade vanilla whenever I want it. I usually put about 25 or so vanilla beans in one of these half gallon things of rum. One more drawer done. Now let's put the stuff back in this drawer. So the things I use a little less often are my rolled oats and my whole wheat flour. So those go in here. Then I'm gonna put my chocolate chips, my cocoa powder, and my cinnamon along with my muffin tin liners. Those can just go right in the corner here. Maybe we'll stick those back there. And that's everything I'm gonna put in this drawer. I'm not gonna put anything else in here. So that's done. I just took the bread out of the oven. It's nice and golden. I feel like they are fully cooked through. I'm gonna let them cool for about 10 minutes and then we'll take them out of the loaf pans. Now I'm going back to those drawers we started with and I'm getting these bamboo organizers vacuumed out and cleaned out. These were wedding gifts and they've worked really well for me over the years. I really, if you watched me organize the baby's room, I bought these expandable organizers. I don't know if you can get ones that are long enough for a drawer this length, but I might look into that because I am loving the ones that I got for the baby's dresser. But for now, those bamboo ones are going to work just great for me. I did want to go through my utensils here. I am going through and with a critical eye and thinking if there's anything that could be donated. I have started keeping a box in the closet that we're going to organize at the end here. And it's a donation box. So as I find things throughout my house, whether that's clothes or kitchen utensils or garden stuff or anything that can be donated to a donation place. I just have really enjoyed now having a box in a specific location that if Josh or I find something that needs to be donated, then we know where to put it. And when that box is full, I will take it to the donation center. So we're making great progress. Now I'm going to organize this drawer here. Th these are the leftover containers that I have used. I got our first set as a wedding gift what will be in eight years in February. Our anniversary is coming up this month, actually. And I really enjoy these. They You can get them at Costco, but I can link them down below if you're interested in them. I love them because the lids stack when I take the dime to stack them. And they are just such good quality. I have never been a fan of the cheaper Ziploc plastic ones because they change the lid and container size so that you're constantly having to buy them because they change sizes and throughout the years I have purchased four sets and they have never changed so I can use the same lid on my most recent one I purchased with the ones that I got eight years ago as a wedding gift. So I'm going to try to make a commitment to keep this organized. Josh is the one who puts the food away typically after dinner and I know that sometimes it frustrates him when I just stuff the containers in there. So I'm gonna to try to make an effort to keep this area nice and organized. I do appreciate an organized drawer and it does the keep me want to keep me more motivated keeping it organized when I have it organized. So this is great progress we're making. I'm also going to go ahead and just fill up my coffee containers and we are going to get the counters wiped and the progress we are making this morning is pretty incredible. It's not even noon and we are almost done with all of what I wanted to get done today. Now I thought about 
adding this drawer to the list. That's my spice drawer, but I think that's gonna need to go for a different day because I really wanna tackle that um, closet. But let me show you what we got in our baking area. I'm so thrilled with this. So over here, we've got our post-it notes. I run my life via post-it notes. I have a candle in here because sometimes I use that on the stove to light a candle. Measuring spoons, our pastry knife, our bench scraper, our whisks. I thought I would put the whisks and the offset spatulas in here as opposed to there because I just don't use them every day there. So in the drawer, there you go. Our pastry brush, our measuring spoons. Uh, the rest of them are in the dishwasher, so they'll come in here when they get out of the dishwasher. Our cookie scoops, a pair of scissors, rolling pin, and I definitely want this in here because I use this on the stove. So happy with how that's looking. Oh, and then back here, I have my rolling pin, and this is a guided rolling pin so that I can put the different guides on there. So that's that drawer. And then this drawer, I'm so happy with it as well. These are definitely the things I don't use very often, except for I wanted to have a pair of kitchen scissors over here and over there so that I have them in two different areas since I have two pair. Our knives, and then just the random stuff we don't use very often. So happy with that. So happy with how our Tupperware drawer is looking, or yeah, drawer, cupboard, drawer, I don't know. Josh is gonna be a lot happier with that because he's the one who typically puts the leftovers away. And I just need to be better about not just throwing stuff in there so that when he goes to put the food away, that he is not frustrated every time. <laughs> I don't want him to be frustrated because he's, you know, helping. So that's great. So now let's go ahead and tackle this. I don't think this is gonna take very long. It's just a matter of getting the stuff out of here that needs to be out. And then, cause I even have back here, it's poor lighting back here, but there is a shoe rack that should not be up on its side because it's not helpful. There's shoes all over here that could go on there, <laughs> but just the way it, this is working, it's not working clearly. So I'm just gonna take a second to empty this entire cupboard. One thing I did buy for this cupboard are these command hooks that I want to attach for our, my mop and my broom so that those aren't just like falling on the ground like they are now in here. And like this broom probably can go in the garage because it's definitely a shop type broom. We're making a little bit of progress, but I'm just gonna continue to empty out this cupboard or cupboard, this closet. This project has been on my list of things to do since we moved in, and it is amazing how something so small, like organizing this closet that took me a total probably of 20 minutes to do, has really improved the quality of Josh and I's life. So if you have one of these things that you've just been putting off that really is not gonna take that much time, I would highly encourage you to take a few minutes to do it because this has blessed us more than you know. All right, we got this emptied, except I just left the dog treats and the dog collars and leashes in here because that's where they're gonna go. Now what I need to do is get this swept out. Then we can start putting stuff back into it, but I wanna start with a nice clean slate here. I don't know where all this greenery came from. It looks like the stuff from the garland from Christmas, but I don't know how it would have gotten into this closet, but we're gonna take care of it today. I do want this to be our coat closet. It's the only area we have to be a cloak closet. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to have this door installed is so that we didn't have to stare at our coats. So I have my green one and my black one. I wear my green one less, so I'm gonna put this one on first. I'm gonna put my coat towards the front because I am shorter than Josh. My arms are obviously shorter than Josh's. So his are gonna go on the inside. And then I did take everything out of this closet. I don't want that closet to be just a catch-all for everything just to like find a home to die back there where things just get put back there and then they're back there forever. So I have it emptied. Because I have the coats on this side, this is the side where we're gonna put our hangy hooks so that we can hang up our mop 
and our broom. Now I have never used a command hook before. This is my first time. So, and these are the clippy ones. So I've heard really good things about it and we'll see how well it goes, but I have enough to where I can hang my mop up and my broom up. Josh does most of the cleaning of the floors. He's got a really fancy mop and broom, but I like to do quick sweeps. So the broom has to go this way so it's close to the wall. That's awesome. I can link these down below. I can't believe it took me about four months to finally put these on my wall, but I absolutely love that. That's so awesome. So now I'm gonna put one up for my broom. Now I have to see if I can get this shoe rack to fit in this closet, but I don't think so. If it doesn't fit the way I want it to, oh, maybe it does. Oh my goodness, it fits literally perfectly. That's incredible. I was gonna say, if this didn't fit in here, I would put this in the garage, but it fits perfectly. I'm gonna put just the shoes that Josh and I wear the most of here. And then the rest of the shoes that we don't wear very often, those ones go in our closet. So my shoes are gonna be on the bottom. Josh's shoes will be here on the top. And now this closet is done. I would say that is so much better. I've got our coats there, our dog stuff here. And then this is an extra pad for the mop so that if one of those pads in the, is in the wash, then I have an extra one. We have our mop, our broom, our dustpan, tons of room back there so it looks nice and organized. It's an area for your eye to relax. And then our shoes. Now friends, I have considered putting a coat rack going this way so that we could hang coats up this way and we could have more coats in that closet. If we do that though, then it's gonna make it harder to access the broom and the mop. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are on that. I'm gonna have Josh, when he gets home, obviously assess this and see if this is functional for him. Because if it's not functional for him, then he won't you know, be as inclined to use it. But I think he's gonna really appreciate the fact that this is more organized, but I will talk to him and see if he would rather have a coat rack. I don't know, a pole basically from one end to the other where we hang our coats up. So this is so exciting. I really didn't think we had a coat closet and I was thinking that was something this house is missing, but it's not really because we just created it out of this area. And then it's kind of like the, I probably will eventually, it's kind of like the utility closet basically. If I can finish my sentence and not interrupt myself, I probably will put like a bottle of cleaner and maybe a thing of paper towels up there as well. So I can see I have a coffee bean here. I've got quite a bit more stuff I need to sweep up. So we are going to test out our new closet. I'm kind of curious how it's going to be to like lean in here. Not too bad. And I have a baby on me. Pulled my broom out. Easy peasy. That's the biggest thing. Sometimes something can look super organized, but if it's not functional, then it's not going to stay looking organized. So I'm really excited about the progress that was made today. This is something that closet has been bothering me since we had it painted or the door was put on and that's been a couple months. So I'm really, well, yeah, because we painted and then we moved in. So it's been like five and a half months or something like that. So it feels good to finally have it at least somewhat, well, no, it's put together. I'm not gonna say somewhat. I'm gonna say that this was 100% of a success today. And I love these little clippy things. I am someone that will, I'm kind of, I don't know if cheap's the right word, but I, I really, I'm not a spender, I'm a saver. So buying those clips was definitely like a splurge for me, even though they're a few dollars. I'm trying to 
learn because Josh is really good at this. Buying the thing that makes the thing go smoother or better. And so I, that, I don't know if that makes sense. Buying the tool for the correct job. And that is bringing me so much joy. I probably spent a total of $6. I have one more so I can figure out where I want to use that. But having it look more organized and up off the ground, not just like leaning up against the door, is bringing me so much joy. And I'm so happy about it that, you know, it's okay to spend the few dollars to make it look more organized. And that's something that Josh is always like, do it, do it, because you know, it looks better or it's gonna make the job more efficient. It's just not necessarily in my nature to do that. So we had such a productive day. We got our bread done. We got so much organization done today. I have the dishwasher loaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that turned on. I don't have to make dinner tonight because we have a family event we're going to. And so I'm just really excited now that it is, it's only 1230. I have the rest of the day to just hang out, relax, and enjoy the rest of the day. I do still need to make a glaze for both the two breads, but I'm gonna wait and do that a little bit later. It's just powdered sugar and lemon juice for this one. And this one, it's just powdered sugar and orange juice. I think what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day is I'm gonna finish ordering all my seeds. We have started the garden project. Monday is when they're going to do some massive land works and start moving the dirt. We're gonna actually see the terraces that are going to be where the beds are gonna be. You can probably see the sun is shining and it's super foggy out there right now. I can't even see down the hill at all but it is a beautiful day out there. It's almost 50 degrees. So I'm gonna to try to spend a little bit of time outside, maybe get a little bit of vitamin D, just walking around, feeling the property and starting to kind of get in garden mode. That's one of the reasons I wanted to kind of get some of this kitchen stuff organized. There's a couple more organizational projects I wanna tackle before full blown garden season happens, but I'm gonna order my seeds today. And I, this next week, I have some family members coming into town. I'm hosting a big party here. We're still in pantry challenge. So I'm gonna focus on that next week, but then that'll give time for my seeds to arrive. And then we need to start considering setting up a grow station. I don't know where we're gonna do that yet <laughs> with our grow lights, our heat maps and all that stuff. And so I need to start kind of noodling about that. I won't probably be able to start it next week, but I'll be able to start thinking about where I want to put it because the week after next, we can start some pepper seeds probably. I really, 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 really want to grow Tabasco peppers this year. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me organizing. I hope this was encouraging to you and maybe a little bit motivational that maybe there's a drawer or a cupboard or something that you've been putting off that just needs to be reworked or you are realizing that the way your kitchen or a cupboard in your bathroom or something is just not working for you. And now that you have been in that space a little bit, you know how you can rearrange it to make it more functional for you. The more functional we make our spaces that we spend time in, especially something like a kitchen, where if the space is not working for you, it can make the task of cooking a lot more cumbersome and less enjoyable. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to get in here today is so that it can be enjoyable process because I do spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you enjoyed this video, I can pop a couple of my other videos right here. You can enjoy between now and my next upload. And then I will link the recipes down in the description box if you are interested in those along with those hooky things that I'm so happy that I finally purchased and command hooks. I don't know what they're called and the containers. So if you're interested in those food containers that I absolutely love, those will be down there as well. So I hope you're having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.